Okay, let's see if I am live. I just set up to be live. I just want to confirm that I am live before um, I start everything here. There is a little bit of a delay, um, so I'm kind of curious. Um, we'll see if anybody... Um, I've got Eric here from Rochester, New York. Hi, Eric. Um, so well, let me see. I have end stream is possibility. So I think I think I should be live now when I am live. So let's see if anybody could just confirm that I am live. It says every, okay. I should be good. I should be good. I think. Okay. Ah, can hear and see. Great. Okay, I'm gonna kick this off then. Um, my name is Lynn. This is the Darwin Orbit channel, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about card scrapers, which is kind of a fascinating, simple, interesting thing, um, which seems very basic, but it's really cool. So um, I have prepared a bit of a show today. We'll hope it goes right. Um, on my left here, you can kind of see a bit of a menu that I have, things that I am planning on covering today. Um, please submit any questions, any comments, and I'll focus on those primarily towards the end. Um, I have also set up Super Chat, um, so if anybody wants to provide support throughout this video, um, please, I would be uh, very appreciative. Plus, I'm just kind of curious how it works, because I'm new to live streaming and to this whole world, and, um, you know, not to YouTube, obviously, but to live streaming and setting up a show like this. It's very interesting to me. Um, so... Let's get started. Let's start our card scraper show. Okay, so when I first um, um, saw this for the first time, I was really like, what is this? It's a piece of, of steel, right? It's high carbon steel, and that's all it is. There's nothing more to it. In, in terms of um, complexity when it comes to tools, this is like on the simple scale for sure. Um, it's something re like relatively affordable if you're looking for a new woodworking toy. This I picked up to my, for myself just just like the other day, which is what brought this whole thing up because I wanted a set for this shop. Uh, so this is a pretty brand new set. I haven't really, I've just been using this one. I haven't really been using the other two very much. Um, and I know this is something that like this is something that's old news to a lot of people. Um, many would like, eh, I know card scrapers, I use them all the time, but a lot of people are gonna be like, hey, <laughs> what is this? I've never seen one of these before. So I kind of wanted to cover like, what are these? How do you use them? Um, how do you sharpen them? Um, and that's really the trick right there. How, um, how to use them in an effective way, because if you don't, um, they make no sense <laughs> whatsoever. So um, let's bring it out to the bench and like just kind of diagnose these a little bit more. So let's start out with the basics here. So I have three card scrapers and this is the kind that you most usually get when you buy a pack. Although, you know, there's lots of different kinds and different light, like different sizes and everything, but here are the most common ones. So we have a rectangular one and we have this one, which is a convey convex and concave one so you have that kind of curved and curved and then we have this ah rather funny uh shape right and this is called a goose neck car scraper and this is um the kind you would use in uh, like hard to reach areas really so what you are looking at here um, is primarily the edges, or that is what you are using, right? You are concerned about all of the edges here being sharp, and that's what you're going to use. Now, some of these card scrapers are a little thicker than others, some are a little thinner. If you look at how thick this one is, um, this one is exactly like one millimeter thick. And you ideally, you should be able to bend this just a little bit or oh, it depends on on what you're doing but um, it's helpful at times to, to bend it when you are uh, scraping it a little bit so what do we have in terms of size here so well each one of these this is about five inches by two and a half so five by two and a half inches 
Um, and honestly, these two, they're, I think these, like, like, this is actually a brand new set. I haven't um, used these for much yet and I haven't used this one at all, just this one a little bit. Um, but these are ones that I, you know, reach for in specific situations, but this is the guy that I am going to use for the majority of the time. The one that I uh, reach back and forth for um, all the time. Again, this is a brand new set, so I've been playing with it, but it hasn't really been used that much. So, um, they are nice and new. You can still see the stamp on these. Um, this is the... Uh, what is it called? Hold on. Crown Crown Band Tools. This is the same brand as I have so now in terms of using a card scraper, um, it's nice to have some sort of support. So you either put this in a vise or you like here I have a bench hook so that you have some support. Now one of these you can either use it in this direction. But if you had a reverse like bench hook, you could also do it this way. I personally think that when you do it this way, you have a little more control in terms of bending the bench hook slightly. So how do you actually, um, I mean, how do you use one of these things, right? Well, first of all, um, I think it is helpful to start just right up, up and down, right? Let's move this so we can get a better angle. So how to hold the bench hook. So you start out like right upside down, right? And then the idea is you want to, if I'm going to move this direction, you're going to want to tilt it a little bit in this direction. Now the key that I have found is to not tilt it too much. If you tilt it kind of to this angle and like I'm talking like this compared to this, you're not you're just gonna kind of scrape it. But if you are almost right side up, like up and down, just a slight tilt, that's kind of what you want, very slight tilt, then you can get some, some shading, some scrapes, <laughs> little, little dustings, right? Um, now this is something you kind of get a feel for the more you're doing it. Um, how to kind of hold it, how to angle it, how to get shavings. Um, you can also, you know, turn it around depending on See, when I'm doing it rather up and down, I'm getting more shaving. Let's zoom in a little bit wood against the card scraper, pretty upside down, a good grip on both sides, slight kind of bend, like so you have a little flexibility, and then still, I'm still getting relatively small shavings, right? Kind of a, kind of a combination between shavings um, and sawdust, I guess I would call this. Now the thing about a card scraper is kind of nice that you can, you can reverse it. It's pretty grain independent. So you have more flexibility if something isn't working. Ah, and there you have that screeching noise. Okay, we got a little bit. Let's try a different wood. Let's try something like, oh, just for kicks, let's try pine. Okay, so I have pine wood here. Pine obviously is a lot softer. It is so tempting to kind of move it at a real, like, low angle. But if you do, you're really not going to be as effective. shavings like little flat flutter shavings right 
And obviously, I mean, what's nice about this is that you actually have four sides to play with. And you can sharpen them all in one go. And then when one side feels a little bit on the dull side, all you do is, you know, you can flip it around. Just gonna give you a very different kind of feeling. Of course, this side, you don't have as much flexibility. And you can really see how the wood here, the grain, it's, it's a little hard to show, but it's, it's first of all, it's like super smooth, you know, like when you do play in your wood sometimes and you get that very kind of shiny surface. This is very shiny right now. Talking about pine. Um, let's try a piece of cherry. kicked off the super chat i really appreciate it this is so much fun um really great so now i can see how it works there um very cool so as you can see uh, getting the card scraper just right holding it right is not necessarily easy um it, it requires the right angle and it, it's just kind of like weird sometimes until you kind of get a feel for it um however like you what you can really notice from from um, from that card scraper right there is that it needs to be sharpened. And that is really what alters a good card, like what makes a card scraper useful and functional. Um, if you have a dull one um, and you're holding it wrong, but primarily if it's dull one, it's not really useful at all. Um, so just want to say hi too, to, uh, to Tom and Ian, Wilcox, Hurricane, hi from I Ipswich, UK, UK, so it's a night there. Um, so hey everybody. Um, but anyway, so when, when it comes down to getting your sharp card scrapers in order, what you really need to do is sharpen them, right? Now when it comes to sharpening um, card scrapers, there are a lot of different ways to do it, right? Um, some are more complicated than others, some are rather finicky. I'm going to show you the method that I use um, that is exceptionally simple um, and I think it gives good results. Um, it's perfect for what I am looking to do. So I have a stone right here. This is a regular stone. Sometimes I use uh, oil on it, sometimes I use nothing. It's not like a Japanese water stone or anything. It has a slightly uh, coarser and finer side. I just keep this in the shop for random jobs like this. And this is what I like to use for the card scraper. So first step, um, of course, if you have like a rubber mat or something, uh, that's cool. I am just going to uh, Let's see, I'm gonna secure it with a little clamping power just so we won't slip around because that's always so frustrating when it slips around. Let's see. I have my stone. Um, I have a card scraper. Let me show you a different angle. So, to sharpen this, what I am concerned about are the sides. Um, I'm not concerned about the middle, right? So what I like to do is I just put this right here on the edge, make sure there's no debris or anything, it's nice and clean, put it down here and then I start moving. I kind of push down uh, so I don't want to like accidentally go like, you know, just kind of try to push down, move around on the stone and I have the finer grit up here. Actually, let's uh, let's do this coarser grit. Okay, so card scraper down, remove the debris already. <laughs> okay, and I and I just kind of move around, push down. Do the same thing on the side. Okay. 
And the only reason why I'm moving farther in is just to distribute so I don't use just the end of the stone. Of course you can do this, but if you're lefty especially, <laughs> if you're, what do you call it? Um, now this one is harder for me. Go back to the righty. Okay, so now when I've done both sides, what I like to do is uh, get a piece of wood, any wood that's flat, and then I put it down here, put this against it, so I have something too. So this I push down, this I push to the side and down, and I do like this. I move around on the stone again. Feels, that feels substantially sharper. Okay, let's, let's try it. Let's, let's put a piece of oak against here and see where we're at. You can definitely tell the difference between... Yeah. Yeah, that is definitely sharper on the one side. Let me do a little more. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit more around the side, all the sides. do something flat because all you you're doing is pushing it down against the stone right It straight, pushed against the side, pushing pressure in both downwards onto the side. Okay, turn it around. I sharpened my blade. That definitely feels that feels a lot better. And my hands are a little dirty. So obviously there are a lot of different ways to sharpen stuff. Like like one of the things about like the woodworking world is that there is always people who are like, this is the only way to do this. Like this is the way to sharpen card scrapers. And my mentality is much more like hey, whatever works, right? Whatever works for you and your setup um, and the amount of time that you are looking to invest in something and what, re what result you're expecting to do or get, right? Um, for example, when, um, when you look around, a lot of people use a file when, when sharpening and there's even jigs that you can buy um, in, in different stores that's gonna hold the, 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 the card scraper in a certain way so you can do the filing. And then of course there's the burnishing rod, which is basically a piece of, it's like a, a steel rod that you, uh, you work the edge on and it's all about manipulating the burr um, and kind of shaping the metal slightly in the right direction um, in order to kind of get it uh, sharp in that sense. 
And I've even seen people who like have like a whole, uh, you know, uh, they have like many, many, many steps in order to get the, uh, the, the, the card scraper, you know, sharpened in the right way. Even like Tormex, I have a Tormex sharpening machine. They have a, like a, a jig or a setup for sharpening card scrapers, which I haven't actually uh, tried yet, but I want to try it um, and check it out. Um, but I think that just a stone like this works really great. Um, so I was using this without um, any any oil. This is like an oil stone, like at least that's what I used for in the past. So um, you could obviously use like more oil on it to kind of make sure you don't get those kind of filings. Of course, then my bench hook gets all messy <laughs> if I add if I add oil to it, but that's fine. Um, but I actually think dry like this works uh, well also. And of course, if you have like Japanese water stones or whatever setup you have, um, works really well um yeah so eric says he also likes the tricks of keeping the scraper square to the face of the sharpening stone i think that is really the trick right you want to make sure that everything is nice um and square so the angle doesn't get messed up that's really the key here right and then this is like a perfect thing to play with because if it doesn't get you know quite sharp enough just sharpen a little more and it's kind of hard to really mess it up right Whereas in, when you're sharpening a, um, like a chisel, for example, and you want to make sure you get the right bevel and the right micro bevel, and you don't want to mess it up and you have the, the back of it. This is very simplistic on the other side. I mean, you just have a, a flat piece of, of metal, right? And that's all you have to concern yourself with. And so it's all the sides and then um, the, the short sides. So um, yeah, let's, let's try it out though, right? Let's see if we can uh, put a piece in here. We get a Zoom in a little bit, it's kind of cool. After sharpening this, it is much better. Ah, getting some good shavings here. I've seen some people who kind of hold it on the side to get a good. No, I think I need a little more practice in that way, but again, being mindful of the angle. Wow. Kind of amazing though how you really like eric says like you can hear the difference in the sound it's almost like cutting with a like a dull knife compared to cutting with a sharp knife and wood has such an interesting sound to it doesn't it i mean when you're actually using it you can just like the crispness of it and there's like this edge to it 
which is kind of cool. Like, and when you think about it, um, a, a, a card scraper works, like you can use it kind of like you would use sandpaper, right? Uh, but the difference between sandpaper and a card scraper is quite dramatic because a card scraper works much more like a hand plane in the sense that it actually cuts. It doesn't like smoothen out the fibers of the wood. It doesn't clog up um, the, the wood fibers. Instead, it kind of just cuts it clean, which is also why you can get that kind of like shiny surface, which is much more like a... Um, like a hand plane, like you know sometimes when you're planing wood and um, you get that, yeah, yeah, that really super shiny finish um, and that's exactly what you can get uh, with a card scraper as well. Um, of course there's other benefits that I like as well, I mean personally I really just hate sanding, right? I hate um, the dust in the air, um, just like the finish that it provides on the wood. It kind of reminds me when I do hand like carved spoons and stuff like that. I really, <laughs> really dislike um, um, sanding <laughs> the spoons, like the bowls of the spoons, because the fibers get kind of fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. Um, so that means also like when you are washing it later on, it gets even fuzzier when the when the grain is raised. Even if you even if you sand, bring the grain up, and then uh, sand some more, it's just like it's a duller finish. Um, and that um, talking about spoons, that's where this one comes into play. Um, this one, I am, uh, I haven't used this particular one for this, but this shape is really great for, um, for uh, cleaning up uh, spoons that you carve or bowls or anything like that, because you can use this side for the interior of, of the spoon bowl or the bowl or whatever, whatever curved surface you're working with, right? It could be anything. And this side you can use for the exterior side. So you have that kind of uh, flexibility um, with this one. So just kind of weird corners, is like where this one's good. Um, this one, the gooseneck one, um, this is like, this is great if you have like hard to reach areas. Like sometimes I do find that these uh, corners here can kind of get in the way um, when you're working on something and it can kind of uh, pierce something that is very sharp, um, very sharp corners. And sometimes you don't want to accidentally like um, make marks in the wood or whatever. Um, and then that's when this one uh, is really handy, comes, uh, is really useful. Then, of course, we had, uh, Philip here asks um, if I have a curved card scraper, and, and if so, how do you sharpen them? Um, well, <laughs> the way I sharpen them, maybe there are other ways, is very similar to the way um, I sharpen this one. So first do both sides of it, and then it's almost easier to just do the whole thing as opposed to focusing on the edges, or you know, either way. So do both sides on, on, the, uh, on the stone, and then <laughs> kind of do the same thing like you did um, with this one on the stone, but instead of just moving it like this, you can kind of like, you, you, you keep it braced against something, and that way you can like keep it nice and square by, while actually moving it around. Of course, you, if you're talking about getting into these corners here, it gets a little trickier. That's really when you need like a rod or something with some sandpaper on. Kind of like you um, sharpen like a hook knife um, for carving. Um, when you sharpen one of those, I find that um, you put like sandpaper um, on a rod. You can kind of glue it or something and then you bring it in here. So that's how I you know, sharpen like the, uh, the curved one as well. Um, which is kind of nice. And so, um, the other thing that I do like about using this, if you compare it to sandpaper especially, is like sandpaper just creates um, a terrible environment, right? Um, it gets dusty, <laughs> it gets dusty. Um, and this is so great because it doesn't get dusty. It's, it's just like, you know, like using a hand plane. Uh, but sometimes it's not practical to use a hand plane and sometimes, you know, um, it's not great for that. Um, this is actually better than a hand plane though in some situations because hand planes are tricky with grain, right? So you have um, like tricky grain that moves in weird directions and then a hand plane can be a real challenge and that's when this comes uh, uh, real handy as well because you can use it on tricky grain because it is much more grain independent. So useful from that point of view as well. Um, the other thing that I like to use this for, this is like a great tool to keep on hand because you never know like what you're going to need it for. 
um, it's like the the word scraper, right? It's all in in the word hand scraper, um, or hand scraper, card scraper. You're scraping it, but that's some ways that's kind of incorrect because you are actually cutting the fibers of the wood. You are not necessarily just scraping. Uh, you are cutting it. So. Um, one of my absolute favorite places to use one of these is when you have glued dried like glue drips on a joint for example and it's like hard to get in there you could get in there with a chisel but sometimes that's not that practical that's when this is great you can just scrape off that um that, that dried glue so really great for that and kind of along the same lines you can also like remove any burn marks from like from the saw been cutting on the table saw you have all these burn marks on the wood just like you know a couple of things with this or <laughs> if you have like marks that you've made with a pencil but you're not uh, you don't have an eraser nearby you know just go for your card scraper and that works out as well um uh, the other thing is like okay you can prepare wood for for finish with using a card scraper right well you can also um, let's say that this actually happened not that long ago um if you have a bad finishing job and you need to remove the uh <laughs> the finish you can scrape off the finish so for example working on um what do you call it um butcher block counter uh put on some coats of um polyurethane beautiful everything looks great put it out in the shade to dry outside with the garage doors open of course the sun moves <laughs> forget about it and a little bit later it's sitting there in the blistering sun and there are bubbles all over the uh the surface and you know just imagining how frustrating because there's a lot of work that's gone into this at this point um and you don't really like you know you know, uh, this idea of removing all the finish is, is annoying. Well, th that's when this comes in really handy because it's so gentle um, and you're also not like, it's not gumming up sandpaper. You know, sometimes when you are, when you're removing a finish using a uh, sander, you, it gums up the sandpaper like crazy. Um, whereas this is not gonna gum it up. You might have to take breaks and resharpen this um, a lot, um, but you're not gonna have to, uh, have to buy more sandpaper, right? And remove gummed up finish in sandpaper. So that's really great from that. And Jens Astashon, Jens, are you from the Norway or Denmark? Uh, also great for removing barnacles from boat hull. And I can definitely see that that would be a good idea. Um, I, uh, yeah, because the, the, on the bottom of the boat, you get so many of those little things that sucks on there and just like to scrape them off. It would be really great for that. Um, I think as well. So, and of course paint, you have a piece of furniture that you want to like remove paint or it's like scraping off. It's almost when you think about these kind of large Svensk! Jens Assarsson. Det var ditt efternamn som fick mig att tro att du var typ norsk eller dansk. Anyway, um, yes. Um, but I've, now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Um, but I was thinking sometimes when you are you thinking about a scraper, you know, like um, if you are if you are doing a renovation and you are scraping off things, this is kind of like a, the more refined version of that, right? It's less brute force and more technique. Now the technique thing can sometimes be tricky. Like sometimes you watch videos and people are getting like super big curls, like like almost like they were to use like a, a smoothing plane and they're getting this huge. <laughs> it's okay um, almost like you're getting these yeah and um, it is all about the technique but it is also about getting sharp sides because of course um, sharp tools is I mean nothing is fun with with dull tools right and it, things are dangerous with dull tools it's like yeah you always want sharp tools I think um, so it definitely requires a little bit of practice to um, to use one of these in the correct way, um, and of course the wood, like what wood you're using, um, also is going to matter in that sense. Um, so uh, so yeah, let's see what's going on. Um, I've been just kind of answering some questions as they come in. And so I hope you guys are uh, you enjoying my setup here with my my show like setup. I have been playing around with OBS which is like a, the live streaming network. And um, 
I'm I'm having maybe a little bit too much fun with it because I've been trying to, to uh, you know, play with it and see what you can uh, figure out with it and how you can set things up. And it's been kind of fun. Um, so let's see here. Um, Eric wrote initially here that he first bumped into card scrapers on the Woodwright show, uh, with Woodwright shop. And I think that is kind of like the gateway place for like a lot of people that, you know, come into contact with, especially like hand tools and classic things, right? And I've learned a lot from Roy too, I think, you know, he's so great. Um, I don't remember seeing one where he's using guard scrapers, but I, yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, the one thing that I, I just really like about this is the simplicity of it. Because you think about um, all of the fun things that you wanna buy in like the store when it comes to woodworking, <laughs> you know, things get pricey real quick. But this kind of thing is not really expensive. You, know, you can get a set for, I don't know, 20 bucks, something like that. And if you compare that to a nice hand plane or something like that, um, it's a pretty good deal. Um, and I've even seen people who make their own card scrapers out of like old uh, hand, like saw blades, hand saws, that kind of thing. And I guess it's all about kind of the thickness of the the piece, right? Um, because, uh, which also kind of depends on what it is you want to use it for. Um, because if it is something rather super, like, like really thick, you're not gonna be able to bend it at all. And that's not always necessary, but at the same time, it is also practical to be able um, to bend it at times. Um, but then of course it's all about holding an angle too, right? Um, so, um, but I am, I'm kind of looking forward to, I, I've kind of gotten out of carving spoons and stuff. You know, I, I kind of tend to go in and out of things like that. And now I haven't carved a spoon for a while. And I was looking through like footage or, or, or pictures and stuff. And I realized like last year, this was the right the time, right? You know, February, March that I started carving a whole bunch of spoons. Maybe it's like a uh, seasonal thing, you know, starting to get warmer. You want to sit outside and carve spoons. Um, and I definitely want to use this one much more for that. Of course, the shape of the spoon has to be the right too. If it's too um, too small, the bowl of it, it's not gonna really work. Um, so the other thing is if you use a card scraper, um, like if you have a big piece and you're like doing it rather fast, it can get really hot. Um, that is one thing that you don't think about, like if you're just like practicing or just doing a little bit, um, it doesn't, you know, you're not moving it that fast, but you can, it can get really hot. Uh, rather fast um, because the metal is just so thin, right? And it, there's all that friction um, that builds up. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, card scrapers are kind of fun. Um, yeah. It would be kind of fun though to, uh, to make your own, especially if you have old, eh, you know, hand saws or, you know, saw blades or whatever. I guess the key then is to actually cut it, r you know, really straight and then, you know, get that absolutely, because you don't want any, um, in, like any kind of imperfections in here or else it would affect the, the way it's uh, the scraping, right? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, what time is it? 4.38 here. I've been babbling on about card scrapers um, for a while. Let me know if you have any questions or anything. Um, it's like I hadn't done live streams for a while, but then um, kind of getting into it now. And there's something so different about it from doing regular videos in the sense. Um, it's like night and day, this idea of, of doing something in live like in a live sense, right? Talking about something. Um, and it's really quite fun. I can see, I mean, <laughs> here I am like way late to the party. There's so many people who do live streams all the time and uh, you know, who um, it's like their thing. I totally get that because it is really fun. Um, but, but yeah. Um, otherwise, I guess that is about it. I have been going over what make is your scraper, um, you know, it's this, it's the it's the I, there's like there's the it's cr the crown hand tools um yeah it it's the same brand as my my hand saw it's this kind of classic english one this one was from rockler this set um 
so yeah but i'm sure that there's a lot of different brands and you know possible options out there um in terms of what to get in, in some ways it's so simple when you think about it it is just a piece of steel there's nothing fancy about it right so um i guess it's all about the quality of the steel right so uh, i've been getting into the japanese um, chisels um, a little bit lately and they are so much fun i made a video about them a while back and um i'm kind of i think about this in the same kind of category as i think about that because this they have such a different feel and the the, the weight of them and the balance of them is so different. Of course, not all Western chisels are like one thing, right? I mean, they're all depend. They're all different, right? Um, but I would just say that the um, um, these kind of classic hand tools that that are simple. There's something about them. Um, there's something about them that I really like. Um, and the Japanese uh, chisels. I I've been on eBay trying to find like um, you know <laughs> beat up old ones. Uh, not a huge um, available, unless you you know look elsewhere. A lot of in Japan, <laughs> but in the U.S. I've been looking around. Um, of course, Japanese chisels are a little bit more expensive than card scrapers is, which is also why I think these uh, you know it's nice to have a set like this. I've seen some people who have like aprons, like chop aprons, um, to make a pocket for them so that they're always like nearby. And I do like that idea. I've been thinking about making a chop apron lately. Uh, because I've been getting into sewing a lot of stuff. I've been getting into sewing a lot of my own clothes and things like that, which is really fun. Um, but I was thinking that I should probably sew something a little bit more practical. Like when you think about sewing in terms of the uh, the wood shop, I think about tool rolls. I made a whole bunch of tool rolls over the years. And I think about shop apron. But then, of course, you actually have to wear that shop apron, right? And some people wear their shop aprons all the time. and They're all outfitted and they have all these different pockets, which is kind of fun. Um, but I mean, it is practical, right? Because you have everything um, at your, like easy to grab, right? So you have a, in your pocket, you know, you have your card scraper. And in that sense, I mean, I would totally, I would just keep the rectangular. You want to make sure you have like, um, if you make a custom apron, shop apron for something like this, or even like a tool bed, you do want to make sure that the, you put them in some sort of pockets where the corners are reinforced or something, because the corners are so sharp, you know, you can really hurt yourself uh, quite easily if you don't do it um, quite right. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> the, the simplistic, when I think about simple shop tools though, um, the bench hook that I was using um, bench hooks, I think, are also just one of those uh, things that um, a lot of people don't know about, or pe especially people outside of the hand tool work don't know. And bench hooks are so useful for pretty much like for so many things, you know, just to hold things in place. Whether you're using a card scraper or sharpening, or you're <laughs> you're doing woodworking or whatever, and and it's the same thing that it's just so simple. There's not much to it, right? It's just like a hook that you know, keeps it in position and there's another hook and then you, maybe you can turn them around. And that bench hook was a project a while back and uh, I, was, I was debating, I actually I made a bench hook video a really long time ago. Um, that was a, that, that bench hook got destroyed. That's the thing about bench hooks though, right? They don't last that long, not if you use them that well. I mean, not if you really cut into them a lot and you use them a lot. Um, they get destroyed, and if you use them for sharpening too, especially with oil or water, they do they do get kind of messy. Um, this one that I had, I kept kind of clean. Um, thanks, Brian. Brian thinks I am super cool. Um, yes, obviously I'm super cool. I'm out in here talking about card scrapers. What can be cooler than that? On a Thursday night, uh, we are here in Virginia and it's been weird all day. It's been super warm. It's been like in the 70s and I feel like I'm in the summer almost. And I love these kind of days when you keep the shop doors open, you're trying to bring the air in, you want to be out there and just hang out and um, just like woodwork and, and make stuff and, and build stuff um, and organize your tools. That's another thing that I've been thinking a lot about lately is organizing um, stuff. Like I've obviously like I, I need to organize things in a major way, organizing the big shop, moving stuff around, cleaning up, you know, sorting out what's worth keeping, what's not worth keeping, you know, a grand kind of, um, you know, but then there's also the small organizing, like just like the space behind me and, uh, 
you know, tool walls and things like that. And I was actually kind of thinking about maybe making like making a live stream, um, bringing in concept like organizational shop concepts um, and, and picking ideas out of them, things that I've made or, or whatever, and just kind of going from that direction. I think that could be kind of fun. So this live stream today I did at four o'clock. So I did my other, my test live stream the other day and I did that one at, what was it? Um, 10.30, something like that. I did a poll on the YouTube post and on Instagram just to kind of see what times um, are most, like if any of you guys have a preference for time because that's kind of the charm with, with live streams, right? Like it's fun when people come along and, and watch and interact and all of that. Um, and time, I guess it's a funny thing because a lot of people seem to be um, preferring evenings, right? So, um, uh, and that's cool. Um, and some people like to prefer the mornings. Like one o'clock seems to be the least, um, the, the time that least people are interested in. Of course, you want to take account into different time zones. So then you have the West Coast, which, you know, pushes things later on. Or, but if you want to take Europe into account, it goes in earlier, right? Um, so it's always kind of like a, um, a balancing when it's a good time to do something. Um, but anyway, I figured I would try four o'clock um, and maybe next time I'll try six o'clock. I don't know. Um, I'll see. But then, of course, you also have the weekdays versus the weekends. Uh, when people are working and not working. So I don't know. I guess I just have to kind of play around with things and also play around with the format. Like, I'm not going to stop making other videos. I'm obviously doing other videos as well. But this is just something I've been kind of diving into. You know, when you're diving into something, you just kind of want to do it all along. Oh, I have a visitor. Um, I, my, my, my kid is outside. So anyway, I'm going to head out now. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah, leave any comments, questions, stuff um, in the comments below. Um, good stuff. Thanks.